Have you been thinking about buying a generator for your camper or RV and not sure what you want to buy? Well, I'm going to show you which generators I purchased and we're going to compare them in this episode of Travels with Delaney. Welcome back everyone. Before we start this week's episode, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please make sure you take time to hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell right beside of it so you get notified each and every time we post a new video. You can also follow us over on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for real-time updates, and you can check out our brand new webpage, www.travelswithdelaney.com. All right, back to this week's episode. So if you own a camper or an RV, you may want to consider having a portable generator if you don't want to have one already built into your rig. Now, the main reason you would want a generator is if you plan on doing any kind of boondocking to where you won't have electrical power to actually plug your trailer in. And there may be components on your trailer that won't operate off of your battery system. Or it could be a situation to where you just need a way to recharge your batteries if you're not using solar or your solar panels won't work when you're buried back in the woods. So a couple years ago, I went out and bought my very first generator and I purchased this Generac IX2000. Now this is a 2000 watt generator with a peak of 2200 watts. And we used this for a couple of years. I actually picked this up at Costco for under $500. Now it's been a really good generator and we were able to use it for not only charging our batteries, but it also would power our air conditioning unit, both in our Jayco Hummingbird, which had a rooftop air conditioner, and our new Tab 400 by New Camp, which has the Dometic Cool Cat AC rated at 10,500 BTUs. But um, my only downside with this particular model is it's a little bit louder than other models. And Generac actually makes a quiet version, which is a few hundred dollars more, and that's going to be the Generac IQ 2000. So that could be an option if you wanted to go quieter. Now Honda obviously is the standard bearer in generators for the RV community. The downside to the Hondas obviously is their price point where they range depending on what size you want to get anywhere from a thousand up to over two thousand dollars but anyone who owns a Honda will tell you it's the quietest or one of the quietest generators on the market it's very reliable dependable and honestly it's a workhorse but I just didn't want to necessarily spend a thousand dollars because I wasn't sure really how much we were going to be using our generator like I said this generator got us through two summer trips out west, and it was primarily used for recharging our batteries. Last summer, I would just turn it on in the morning for about an hour to recharge our batteries, and then I'd turn it on in the evening for about an hour. The prior summer in Yellowstone, a couple times, we just wanted to cool down the trailer. I would actually turn it on for maybe a half an hour just to cool the trailer down by running the air conditioning unit. And like I said, this thing did a great job. But one of the things I noticed this summer was we weren't the loudest generator in the campground, but we also weren't the quietest. The other thing was if we wanted to run our air conditioner, we had to make sure everything else was pretty much shut off on power because it would take all of the power being generated just to run the AC. So this summer I decided to purchase a larger generator and a quieter generator. And so my choice for that was this Predator 3500 watt. Now this is actually sold at Harbor Freight and I know right now some of you are thinking oh you got to be kidding Harbor Freight. Well if you actually check out the reviews on this particular generator it's actually getting really good reviews and at the price point I just had to go ahead and take one for the team and buy one and see how it would do. Now one of the things I really like about this particular generator over the Generac is the gas tank capacity. This Generac barely has a gallon of gas in it, and so I was finding that I was having to refill it quite often. Where with the Harbor Freight, the larger generator, it actually has a 2.6 gallon fuel tank, and I really like that. But there's also some nice features on here that I like um, from the standpoint that, number one, around here, we have the electric start. And so it just has a battery in it that charges itself and it's literally you push a button and this thing fires up. Now this one fires up fairly easy with the old pull style and this does have a pull handle on it in the case your battery is ever dead. So I really like that. The other thing that I like about this is because it's a 3500 watt peak and that is peak on the 3500 watt but they provide you a 30 amp RV plug adapter 
and so you and that comes with the unit and I can plug my trailer cord directly in I don't have to downsize it to a 20 amp plug it also does have 20 amp plugs on here in case you ever want to just run an extension cord or or something like that for other uses so I really like the fact that I can plug it in with 30 amp. It has a digital display that will show me everything digitally that's going on with the unit, how much it's producing, how much is being drawn. I mean, this thing just has a lot of nice features. It is on small wheels, and so it's easy to roll with these two handles, and it's also easy to pick up having those two handles. One of the real downsides to this unit is the weight. It comes in at about 100 pounds versus the smaller Generac that comes in closer to 50 pounds. It's also a little bit bigger, obviously, because it is a bigger generator. So it does take up more space in our cargo area in our Forerunner. But I decided that I was willing to go with the extra weight and the extra size to have the extra power. And that's really what I liked about this was the fact that we can now run our air conditioning unit and run other things at the same time because this unit will produce up to 25 amps, amps total at any one given time. So I like the bigger size, but the real selling point for me was how quiet it was and how cheap it was. Now I paid with the coupon $699 plus tax. I also went ahead and purchased the additional one year warranty. So we actually extended our warranty beyond the traditional 90 days that Harbor Freight gives you for an additional $79. Harbor Freight, at the time of this video, also is offering a two-year extended warranty for an additional fee. So I decided I'd take the chance buying it at Harbor Freight, buy the extra warranty, and Harbor Freight's always been really good to me. If there is an issue with their extended warranties, just return the product and they give you a brand new one. So we went ahead and purchased this, and I guess the next step is to go ahead and test it to show you how quiet this particular unit actually is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get these ready to fire up and we're going to test them using a decibel meter on my iPhone. Let's go ahead and test both of these out. We're going to use a decibel app that I purchased on the iPhone and we're going to do this test at roughly 25 feet from the generator out to where we're going to hold the decibel meter. The other thing is I'm going to make sure the exhaust is pointing directly at that meter so we get the loudest possible reading. All right, let's get these fi generators fired up. All right, keep in mind these have been in my garage. They haven't been started now in a few weeks. Uh, temperature this morning in the garage was about 48 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and fire this one up first to do that decibel check. And then we'll do the Harbor Freight Predator. So first thing I'm going to do is choke this one, turn it to the on position. And then this one actually has a primer ball. And we'll see how easy she starts. IX2200 peak. Let's go ahead and fire up the Harbor Freight Predator and get some sound levels on it. Okay, same deal on this one. It hasn't been started in a few weeks. So, but with this one, we have the electronic start. Now there's no primer ball on this one. We just take it all the way around to start. We wanna make sure our eco mode is in the off position and let's push the button. All right, that's how easy it is to start the Predator from Harbor Freight. Let's go ahead and check out our decibel reading on high setting. Uh, 
Okay, now let's check it out on Eco. There you go. This thing is really quiet. You can see that the Predator is significantly quieter at 3,000 watts or 3,500 peak than this little Generac that is 2,000 watts or 2,200 peak. You also could see how much easier it was to fire up the Predator with that electric start. So there's lots of videos out there. You can check them out with more in detailed reviews on the Predator and also on the Generac. I really just wanted to show you what these two units were and show you a comparison of how quiet they were. Now, obviously we'll come back in the spring with another test when we get our trailer back and we're able to actually hook it up so I can show you what happens with both of these from a sound standpoint when it's plugged in and we turn the air conditioning unit on. I can tell you from my own personal experience that this one hardly revs at all and this one revs significantly, especially on that initial kick in of the compressor. When I demoed this this summer at the UCAMP rally for New Camp RV owners, other owners couldn't believe how quiet it was and a couple couldn't even believe the AC was running with it being that quiet. So we're really happy. Only time will tell whether we get our money's worth out of this or whether it ends up failing us early. But for me personally, much better choice at $700 versus the Hyundai equivalent at over $2,000, especially no more than we're going to be using it during the summer months. All right, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop those down below in the comment box. And until next time, everybody, we'll see you on down the road. Good night. I can hear